Good morning, Moravi Rabotai. We are continuing Alma Sechet Brachot and we are on Daf Membet Amud Bet. The Limud of Amud Yomi has been dedicated for Chodesh Kislev by Shahab and Shen Zarabi for health, happiness, and Parnasa of their family, Aliyah Betoran from their children, and by Aaron and Miriam Zaguri, the Yudu Nishmad Idit Bat Miriam. Today's Learning has also been sponsored for Ilui Neshama of Farangis Bat Yadola Alea Shalom that her Neshama should have on Aliyah. Amen. Now we are on Membet Amudbet. 13 lines from the top, we have the contrast of two stories about Rava and Abaye and their drinking habits, which actually would make a difference in the halachot of brachot. We mentioned before that by Shabbat and Yom Tov, days that you are anticipating, you're accustomed to drink more, you're anticipating to drink before Suda during Suda, after Suda, when you make the bracha on wine before Suda, that bracha covers also the wine after Suda. But in Marasa, that's only on Shabbat and Yom Tov. On a regular Tuesday, if you drink, if you happen to drink before Suda, it doesn't necessarily cover the wine after Suda because who knows if you got to drink. That was not the regular norm that during the week you're having cups and cups of wine. So says the Gemara, Rabba Barmadi, Ikla Lebe Rava. Rabba Barmadi was visiting Rava. Bechol, regular Tuesday, regular day, weekday. Chaz yet barich lifnei hamazon, vehadar barich lachar hamazon. He saw that he drank a cup, he said the bracha beforehand, and he drank a cup afterwards. Amaleh, ye yasher. He said, gewaldik. You are doing it correctly, just like we saw yesterday. This is what Rabbi Yosho ben Levi Paskin, that you say bracha beforehand, you say bracha afterwards. If we are talking about drinking before and after Suda on a weekday. Now, in contrast to that, Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Yosef, Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Yosef was visiting Abaye's house, but this was on Yom Tov. He sees, to his, to his surprise, that he is making a bracha on every single cup that he drinks. He makes a new bracha He says, wait a second. You don't hold of this, Rabbi Yishev and Levi, that we discussed yesterday. He says, no, it's different. I do hold of him. But I am not accustomed to drinking at all, even on Shabbat and Yom Tov. I'm not a big drinker. So every cup that I have, for, as far as I'm concerned, is the last cup I'm having. Mm -hmm. It's not that I know I'm going to be drinking after Suda. So therefore, even after Suda, every cup and cup is a new decision that I am making. When I say bracha on this, I'm saying it only on this because I'm not planning to have anything more afterwards. So this is Marab. Ibayalehu, they asked in the Bet Midrash, Balahem Yain, Betoch Amazon, Maushif Torah Tayain, Shalachar Amazon. Now we discussed already that the wine you drink before the Suda covers the wine after the Suda, right? Now, how about the wine that you drink in the Suda? You remember we discussed that three, there are three occasions within the course of the Suda that they would drink. They would drink a cup before Suda with parperet, with some chicken, fish, whatever, to open their appetite. That was like an appetizer. Then they would have the actual main course. It's Suda, they would wash and have Suda. And then after Suda, they would have another cup of wine with clayot, with dessert, right? Lachmaniot. So we mentioned before that if you said, Bracha on wine before Suda, 
that that's going to cover the wine after Suda, right? Now, before, after, in the middle. If you say that the wine before Suda covers after Suda, how about, asks the Gemara, the wine inside the Suda, imagine if you didn't have wine before. Now, in the course of your meal, you make a Bore Priya Geffen, does that cover the wine you're going to have after Suda for dessert? Now, what's the question? Yes, you did. Regularly, when you wash, it doesn't cover the bracha on wine. Even if you say hamotzi, it doesn't cover wine because wine is chashuv that designates a bracha for itself. Therefore, it's not covered. It's like um, degrading for it to be covered by, by wine, by hamotzi rather, right? That's what we said in the Gemara. So the question really here is, if the wine inside, inside the Sudan covers, you would say, wait a second, wait a second. How, how does this work? You told me the wine before covers the wine after. Why wouldn't the wine inside the Suda, which is closer in time, not cover the wine after the Suda? What's the logic? Says the Gemara, I'll explain to you what the Hezbeer is. If you find to say, that means, if you explain, that Barech al Amazon poteret ayayin shlachar Amazon, the logic that the wine before Suda covers the wine after Suda is because Mishum both of them, the purpose is you want to have a good glass of wine. That's, the, that's why you're having it. You're setting yourself up for drinking. You're enjoying a nice glass of wine. Therefore, both of the drinkings are the same purpose. One covers the other. But during the Suda, you're not drinking to have a good glass of wine. You're drinking, actually, as, as the medical information has it, and the Rambam says it, drinking together with eating is not a wise idea. You want to drink after you eat. Not, you know, to, to, that the food should be swimming in your stomach as you're eating it. So why would they drink? Not for drinking, but rather the zelishtot, the zelishrot. The wine after Suda is for sake of drinking. You want to have a good glass of wine, but the wine inside the Suda is lishrot. Lishrot means you want to just push down the food that you're eating. It's to assist the, the eating process. So it's not really drinking, it's just, uh, you know. So maybe because the two are completely different topics, one should not cover the other one. Or Dilma, or maybe you say there's no difference. Maybe you will tell me, don't split hair. It's a geffen. Both of them are drinking wine at the end of the day. Lo shena, Rav Amar Poter. Now this is going to be a ma massive machloket amurayim. Look at this. Rav Amar Poter, Rav Kana Amar Eno Poter. Rav said it is, does, it does cover. Rav Kana says it doesn't cover. Rav Nachman says it does cover. Rav Sheshat says it doesn't cover. Rav Huna, Rav Yehuda, the call tell me that the Rav, Rav Huna, Rav Yehuda, all of the students of Rav Amri, Eno Poter. They all hold Eno Poter, and that's the Alaha, the Drama Paskins, says the Gemara. This that we said, Rav Nachman holds, it does cover the wine inside Suda, does cover the wine after Suda, was challenged by Rava. Rava asks Rav Nachman, Balahem yayin betoch amazon, the Braita says that if you had wine that came inside the Suda, every person and person says the bracha for themselves. Right? This we discussed before. Laachar amazon, and then when wine comes after the food, one person says the bracha in agency of everyone. One says it for everyone. So says Rava, wait a second. Amale, meaning he's asking him, if you said the bracha already inside the suda, why are you making another bracha after the suda? This is Rava asking Rav Nachman. In other words, Rav Nachman is of the opinion that if you said bracha for a priya inside suda, 
You're no longer going to need to say another bracha on Yain after the Suda in dessert. So Rava says, wait a second, this bracha doesn't, doesn't seem to shtim, doesn't seem to fit your shita because it says, if you said bracha, if you bring wine during the course of Suda, every individual has to say for, for themselves. I can't say for everybody. Everyone says it for themselves. But then after Suda, one person says it for everyone. So says Rabbi, wait a second. Why would you say bracha after Suda altogether? You already said bracha during Suda. You should be poter, the wine of after Suda, with your bracha. So Rab Nachman says, that's not a question at all. <laughs> this Braita is teaching me halacha. That means conceptually inside Suda, every person says bracha and wine for themselves. Conceptually after Suda, that means if you didn't bring wine during the course of the meal, if your first time bringing it after the meal, then one person could say the bracha forever. But of course, if you brought wine inside the Suda and everybody said a geffen, then you don't need to say another bracha after the meal. That's his shita. Right? So he understands the bracha to be saying a conceptual halacha. Not that you're talking about the same meal that they brought wine in the middle and they brought wine after, <laughs> but rather, if you bring wine, in the middle of the Suda, everyone needs to say bracha. If you didn't bring wine in the middle of the Suda, you only brought wine after the Suda, then one person can say bracha for everyone, and that's Salah. Says the Gemara. Hachi Kamar. We explained it outside, we're reading it inside. Hachi Kamar. Im lo balahem yayin betoch amazon. If the wine did not come betoch amazon, you didn't bring wine during the course of Suda, and only brought it ela la'achar amazon after Suda, then one person says the bracha for everyone. Isn't this uh, what the Mishnah says? Like, what's the? I don't. I don't hop why why they're bringing this. What's the question? Isn't isn't that what the Mishnah already said? Isn't he repeating what the Mishnah says? He's explaining the Mishnah. He meaning he was asking him from our Mishnah, why is it that the 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 um. Wine after Suda is requiring bracha for itself. You already said bracha in the course of the Suda, right? So Rav is asking Rav Nachman, why are you saying bracha twice? Rav Nachman says, no, you're not saying bracha twice. The Mishnah is discussing two separate cases. One of them is when the, the wine was brought in the middle of the Suda. Yeah. It, the focus of the Mishnah is only to say that you can't have one agent sing the bracha for everyone. But then the Mishnah discusses, <clears throat> if you didn't bring wine in the middle of the Suda, you only brought wine after Suda, then one person could say, bracha for everyone. So it says, the Gemara, two dots, six lines up from where the, the wide lines are. Berach halapat, we learned to the Mishnah, berach halapat, patarat aparperet. If you say the bracha on bread, you are poter, you cover the bracha on the appetizers, the parperet. Ala parperet, on if you said the bracha on the appetizers and parperet, lo pataret apat. Then that does not cover the bracha on the bread. Bet shamai omrim. The last words of the mishnah is, bet shamai. They say that you 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 they argue basically with chachamim with with the with the previous shita. Bet shamai omrim aflo maase kedera. Not even masekedera, not even a cooked masekedera means food cooked in the pot, right? So it says, says the Gemara, Ibayadehu, Bet Shamai Aresha Pligi or Odil Masefa Pligi. What are Bet Shamai disagreeing on? Now, I, I want to share with you that this is going to be um, just for clarity, I'll write it, but. This has no real nafkamina because it's just a uh, intellectual inquiry about the shita of Bechamai, which we know we don't ask in like Bechamai. The question is primarily discussing the, uh, the Bechamai. I'll see if I could just write it on the side over here. Um, so the, there are two parts of this Mishnah that we have. The 
part of it first is right that if you say bracha on pat on the bread it also covers parperes here. We should check that means it covers it, right? If you say Bachan Pat, it covers Parperet. If you say on Parperet versus Pat, it does not cover, right? That's the simple, um, simple understanding, right? Now, then the Gemara says, Bet Shammai hold. <clears throat> They don't say what do the Bet Shammai holds. It, it just says, Bet Shammai says, not even a, a Maseh Kedera. So what do you mean not even Maseh Kedera? It, the Bet Shammai could be understood commenting on the ratio of the Mishnah or on the Sefer of the Mishnah. And the outcome would be drastically different as to what Bet Shammai is telling you. Let's go through this, looking at what we wrote over here, and you'll see how different it is. If the Bet Shammai is commenting on the ratio of the Mishnah, it would mean that the Mishnah, at the beginning of the Mishnah, is telling you, if you say bracha on, on bread, you cover the appetizers, the parperet. And Bet Shammai says, not only you don't cover the appetizer, which is not at all a part of the meal itself, but you don't even cover the Masekedera. That means pot doesn't cover anything, basically. Even the food that's eaten as, not, not with the bread, but as one of the main dishes, part of your suda, even that it doesn't cover. In other words, with Shammai, according to this holds, the bracha of Hamotzi only covers things that you eat actually with bread. It's like a garvetafel type of thing. But it doesn't cover... The parperet, which is the appetizer, the dessert, it even doesn't cover masa kedera that is part of the main course that you're eating, just not with bread. It's similar to the idea of the cabbage and the that you say an extra bread, right? And <laughs> if you say the bracha is going on, on sefa, it will be a completely different thing. Because the sefa says, if you said bracha on parperet, you don't cover the pat, right? And Bet Shammai would be saying, well, oh, not only you don't cover the bread with your bracha on the appetizers, but you don't even cover the masa kedera with the bracha on the appetizers, on the dessert or on the appetizer, right? So according to that, if you say bracha on bread, Bet Shammai could hold, you cover masa kedera, parpe, everything. You hear what's happening? It's completely different in the Shita of Bet Shammai, what they would hold if you <clears throat> read the Bet Shammai's words going, referring to the Resha, the beginning, or to the Sefa to the end. I lost a few people here. Okay. If we say Bet Shammai goes on Resha, that means Bet Shammai holds, if you say Bracha on, on bread, you did not cover anything else, anything, but things that are eaten actually with bread, sandwich. But if you say Bet Shammai goes on Seifa, all they're saying is, when you say Bracha on Parperet, on dessert, you don't cover the bread, that's for sure. Not only that, you don't even cover the um, spaghetti. Right? But what do they hold about saying Bracha on bread covering other things? They could hold exactly like the Reisha, that it covers everything. So completely different directions in Bet Shammai. Now, what nafkamina does this make? What difference does it make? It's shita bet shamai. Doesn't really make much of a nafkamina. And you'll, as you'll see, the Gemara doesn't even have a clear outcome in this, in this um, logical machloket of what bet shamai really holds. So let's go through the whole few lines. But what the Gemara is going to say is exactly what we just said. Nothing really more. So just bear with it and... and, and See the words of the Gemara inside, says the Gemara. Ibayalehu, two dots. This is three lines up from the white lines. Ibayalehu, they asked the Bet Midrash, but Shamai Arejah Pedigi, Odil Ma Sefa Pedigi. 
But Shammai, is it going to argue? Is it arguing on the Reisha or on the Seifa, on the beginning or on the end? So it's, the Gemara explains. The Kamar Tanakama Berachalapat Patar Taparpere. Tanakama holds if you say Brachav Hamotzi on, on the bread, you cover the appetizers Parpere. The Horshken Masekedera and Tanakama holds, of course, the Brachav Hamotzi covers the spaghetti, the, the Masekedera. The Ati Bet Shamai, the Memar, first wide line. And the Bet Shamai is coming to argue with Tanakama, saying, Lo mi baya parperet de lo patra. Not only the Brachava Moti does not cover the parperet, the dessert, the, the, or the appetizer. Ela afilu masa kederana mi lo patra. Even the spaghetti, even the main dish, which is part of the main suda, but just not eaten with bread. The Bechamai argue that it was not poter. It is not covered. Or Dilma, or maybe it's not going on Resha, it's going on the safe on the end. A safe of the Gide Katani that we learned in the Mishnah. Beracha la parperet, lo patare tapat. Halakama holds if you say bracha on the appetizer on parperet, lo patare tapat does not cover the bracha on bread. And pat hu de lo patar, avar maseke de la patar. Which means it only doesn't cover the bread, but it does cover the masekedera. You said, let's say, mezonot on a lachmaniot and something as an appetizer, it would cover the masekedera. If it's the same bracha, it will cover it. At least the same bracha. Says the Gemara, the atu bet shamay le memara bet shamay comes to say, the afilu masekedera nami lo patar. It would be coming to say, not only the parperet does not cover the bread, but it also doesn't cover the masekedera, which is the spaghetti in, in our example. Which one is it? Is Bechabai going on Reisha, commenting on this, or commenting on the Seifa, and the Gemara ends up saying, Teku. Teku means, we mentioned before many times, Teku stands as as an abbreviation as as a gimat as as a rashi tevot for tishbi tares kushot veavayot that yawa navi is going to which is called the yawa tishbi tishbi is going to answer kushot veavayot you know in other, words, in other words we don't know we don't know until mashiach comes which yawa navi is going to come three days before mashiach and so on and so forth he is going to clear clear this safek. We don't know. The Gemara leaves it as a question. We don't know if Bechabai was referencing Reisha or Seifa. So says the Gemara. <laughs> By the way, you know, the, the, it's brought that in the time of Mashiach, Halakha is going to be like Bechabai, right? So this really fits actually because in the time of Mashiach, right, right before, Ayan Navi is going to clarify what the Halakha of Bechabai is, then um, will be will be actually Allah which is a topic uh, beyond the scope of this talk. At some point, we'll talk about why would it be that Bet Shammai would be Allah, the Allah would change in the time of Mashiach. What does that mean, even? Right? Mm -hmm. Allah is like Bet Hillel right now to the degree that Bet Shammai is not even considered the Mishnah when Bet Hillel is there. And then all of a sudden, it's going to change in time of Mashiach. What is that supposed to mean? That's something that Bezat Hashem at some point we will discuss. Says the Gemara by two dots. Four lines down from the wide lines. We mentioned that if they're sitting together, every person says the bracha of wine together. One person, for, you know, one, one person for other people does not work. Every person has to say their own bracha. But if they set themselves up to, to lean and to eat together, then one person says the bracha for. Um, for everyone else, right? That's what we mentioned in the in the Mishnah. The last two lines of Membet Amud Aleph. That's what we said. Hayu If they were sitting, everyone says the bracha for themselves. Hesevu. But if they made hesevu, if they lean, set themselves up together, then echad One person says the bracha on behalf of everyone. So says the Gemara. Hesevu in lo hesevu lo. It's mashma from our Mishnah that merely sitting does not work. 
you must be mesev, you must be in the reclining position, and then one person could say bracha for everyone else. That's what you see clearly from our Mishnah. The problem is there is a brighter. There is a brighter that indicates clearly not like this. The brighter clearly indicates that even if you are sitting, you could, one person could say bracha for everyone, just sitting around the table. You don't need to recline. Just mere fact, standing is not good enough. Sitting would be good enough. So this is a stira from, the, from our Mishnah to a brighta. And then the Mara is going to bring a fascinating story about the funeral of Rav, which hopefully we'll have the time to, to, to read and to discuss today. Says the Gemara, Urminhu, it's problem. Our Mishnah seems to say you need to recline to be able to say, one, one person say bracha for everyone. But the Braita seems not like that. What's the Braita? Asara shayulchim baderech. If 10 people are going on a path, right? This is a, a tosefta in, in the Perge, a brachot. Asara shayulchim baderech. If 10 people are walking on a path, even though that every one of them is eating from the same loaf of bread, you have a massive chala. And everyone is taking the pieces from this chala and eating. One person cannot say bracha avamotzi for everyone. Every person must say their own bracha. Is there them walking while they're eating? If they sat to eat, even if they each have their own loaf of bread, one person can say bracha for everyone. So you see here, Katani Yashvu Afar Pishno Esem. The Brayta that Tosefta says clearly, Yashvu. If they sit together, they could one say bracha for everyone. You don't need to recline; just mere sitting is enough. So now it's a stira. Which one is it? Says the Gemara. Amar Rab Nachman. Rab Nachman answers. Rab Nachman Bar Itzchak. Kegon de Amri Nizil Venechu Lachma Beduch Plan. The Tosefta, the Brayta is talking about the case that they are officially set themselves to eat together. In other words, says Rav Nachman Itzchak, you think this is a magic of sitting versus reclining? No. The core concept is if you guys are set to be eating together, then you're one group. When you have one group, one says the bracha for everyone. But if you happen to be together, you're not set as a group, then everyone has to say their own bracha. So normally speaking, if I'm sitting and eating and then you come and sit, it doesn't mean that we are a group. There's a table, you sit, I sit, everyone sits, and yalla. But if we say, guys, let's go um, hiking and we're going to get to the top and there we're going to sit and eat together breakfast. So we set the, ourselves up as a group to go to that place and sit and eat. That's a group. That's a group, group action. So if we set ourselves up to go to a certain place, even if you're not reclining, you're considered a group. But in a regular setting, you only are considered eating a suda together if you set yourself up. It's not just a temporary thing. I'm quickly eating, eating and running out. We're setting ourselves to a suda, nicely reclining. That's usually considered a group eating. Says Rabbi Nachman, it depends on that. So therefore, the Tosefta that says, when you're sitting even, you could say, one person could say bracha for everyone is a scenario in which people set themselves up from before. They said, let's go to this place and sit and eat. That's considered a group. And therefore, one person could say bracha for everyone. Wait, these 10 people who were traveling together didn't know each other. They They're didn't... walking. They're it all... could be a caravan. It could be yeah. anything. It's not as far as the Suda is concerned. There's not a group eating. You're telling me 10 people from 10 different uh, caravans. All no, together. one caravan. But they're not really, they're not, they don't care eating together. As far as the Suda is concerned, it's like imagine a yeshiva, right? This is actually something that happens very much when, when it comes to the halachot of Brikat Amazon, Zimun. Mm. When you have tables in the dining room of a yeshiva or a workplace and you have lunchtime. So you have lunchtime, 400 people 
pour in to the dining room and everyone is eating. Do you have table numbers? No. You take the, the pizza, the whatever it is that you're eating, you sit down the first time, the first table that you find, you know, so you know the people, maybe a little bit, you don't, do know them, don't know them. You don't really care where you're sitting. Some can say, I want to eat with these people. I want to eat and go back to the bit with and learn. So that's not setting myself up, even though that I may know them, even though that we are in the same yeshiva, maybe that's not considered that I'm setting myself to eat with you versus say, ah, this is our table. This is our table every single day. This table is where Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda sit and eat together. You need invitation to come to this table. So then they're setting themselves, but they're makbit. They want to eat together. That's very different, right? So says the Gemara. Kinach nafshir the Rav. When Rav passed away, so we have spoken a lot about Rav. Rav was his nickname, just like Rebbe was the nickname of Rabbi Uda Hanasi. Rav was the nickname of Rav Abba Arichta. The reason he's called Rav, not Rebbe, aside from the fact that it would be very confusing with Rabbi Uda Hanasi, is because he was in Bavel. He learned by the Shiva of Rebbe. He was one of the best students of Rabbi Uda Hanasi. And then he came to, to Bavel. But he was so big that they, when you say Rav, the Stam Rav, the Stam Rabbi, is reference to him. He was the biggest. Right? He's in the generation of Amoraim, but he's the only one, arguably, that is considered a Tana also. He's like in the middle of the generation of Tanaim and Amoraim. And when the Gwara has his back against the wall, because Mishnah seems to argue or Braita seems to argue with Rav, and we don't have any explanation, we say, well, not a big problem because Rav could disagree with the Mishnah. Rav could act as a Tana. That's how big he was. But his colleagues, Shmuel, it's not considered the, the Tana. If you have a Kasha from a Mishnah, from a Brayta, and Shmuel, it's a, it's, a, it's a problem. There's one place that the Safot say Rabbi Yocharan maybe could also be considered a Tana. These are all, again, same generation, first generation of Amoraim. All of them are students of Rabbi Uda Anasi, right? So Rabbi Chia also was a student of, of, of Rabbi, but he was a, a Tamit Chavir. He was like a student, was a, which was a colleague. So he is considered a Tana, but the actual students of Rebbe, Rebbe was the last generation <laughs> of Tanaim, basically, and the students are all considered Amoraim, but Rav is a, a Yotze Dofan, an exception in many ways. He lived a very, very, very long, unusually long life. The Gemara says Rav was Mishpachat Abrimi. He had an extremely healthy genes, and he lived an extremely, extremely unusually long life. And now here is when finally he passed away. <laughs> when he finally passed away, Adlu Talmidah Batre. Of course, all the students went after the Aaron, after the coffin, in the, in, the, in the precision of his funeral. And when they buried him and they're coming back from the funeral, Kihadri, when they're coming back, Amri Nizul Venuchulachma Anahardank. Let us go and Break bread to eat suda by the river Denk. So Bata the Karichi, after they sat there, they went there, they sat there. They had this bracha, they had this, this question. Is it only that when, when you sat together and reclined is the, the, the time that you say bracha, one person says the bracha will be got Amazon for everyone. Or is it even if they sat and didn't recline? So says the Gemara, when we said that you could say Amazon, one person says for everyone, is it only when they are reclined and they ate together, but if sitting is not sufficient, or maybe, or maybe the fact that we set ourselves to go to this place, and we said, let's go to this place and eat together, 
That already is considered as though you were reclining because you set yourself up officially to eat together as a group, and therefore one could say Brikat Amazon for everyone. They didn't know. They didn't have clarity on this halacha. Come, Rab Adabar Ava, Rab Adabar Ava, students of Rav got up. And the last time we had Rab Adabar Ava was on Dafkhaf. You remember, he, he, that, was, that was the story of the Gemara saying why the Dorot Rishonim, the earlier generations, they, they had tremendous, tremendous Asiata Dishmaya that little Tfila Hashem would do miracles for them. And the Gemara brought the story of Rab Adabar Ava that tore the priesthood. Um, off, off this red, the, the red garment and so on and so forth. So he, he, his uh, thing is tearing clothing. Here he, he got up from Adam Bahava. Achtar Karela Horebe Kara Kriya Karina. He already, everyone had tore Kriya already on the Rebbe. So he turned his clothing back, tore, the torn part should go in the back, and he tore a new Kriya, a fresh Kriya. He said, This is an Avelut again. Every Shayla that we have and we don't have the answer. When our Rebbe was alive, we would just go and ask him. Rav knew everything now. He passed away and we don't even know the Alachot of Birkat Amazon. Amar Nach Nafshed Rav. Rav died. Ubirkat Amazon Alo Gemirnan. And we didn't even learn the Alachot of Birkat Amazon. Adata Ha'usava until Ha'usava, which is normally a reference to Eliyahu Nabi, came, Ramalahu Matnitin Abraitahi, did the same thing that our Gemara did. He told them, well, let's see. Our Mishnah says, Hesevu. The Brita says these 10 people were going and they said, let's go you know, to that place. And he contrasted the Brita and the Mishnah together for them. And he says, Veshali Lehu, and he answered to them, Kevan the Amri. The answer is, once they said, Nizul lachma plan, let's go and eat bread in that place. It's considered kehesevu dami. It's tantamount to setting yourself up to eat together, like keheseva with reclining. And therefore, he told them, basically, you could be considered as one group, even though that you didn't recline. And one person could say, Brikat Amazon for everyone. Bezat Hashem will continue this in the days to come.